Welcome back. This is the second session for today, and I'm happy to introduce uh, Bruno, Bruno Capuano. Hi, Bruno. Hey, guy. Hello, everyone. So Bruno is a regional innovation lead at Evernate Canada, from Canada, of course. Uh, he's been a Microsoft MVP for the past 12 years, uh, an active Microsoft Technologies community participant, a writer, and a frequent speaker. And he's talking, uh, going to talk about uh, how to get started with uh, machine learning and also AutoML. So uh, it's your stage. Let's start. Thank you very much. So hello, everyone. Uh, Bruno Capone here from Canada. It's a pleasure to, to share with you some of my experience working with machine learning. This specific one with machinelearning.net, which is a very, very cool tool if you are a Microsoft developer, if you are a .NET developer, to start doing some machine learning. By the way, this is not Canada. This is a Caribbean background, but winter is coming here in Canada. So I need to have something like this in my mind instead of the amazing weather that we are going to. So hey, let's start. Let me let me start with what this is going to be about. So first, big disclaimer: do a lot of bad jokes, bad animation, bad demos. So sorry about that. This is the way to start. And let me show you why we want to do this. And, and let me tell you a story of how we are going to do this and how I started. A couple of years ago, I am not a machine learning expert. I am a aficionado. I, I really like the technology. And a couple of years ago, an example, we had a new cat at home. And the cat was a kitten, but he likes to go outside and he's hunting and he's bringing little mice and little birds at home. You can see there are a couple of pictures. So my wife told me what we can do. We don't want to have, we don't want to get up in the morning and find little birds flying inside the house. So I tell my wife, hey, I can use technology to do this. Let me try to, we have a couple of cameras inside the house. Let me hook up into these cameras and create a system to analyze and to find an example. And if he is bringing a new friend at home. So I was thinking that, hey, this should be very easy. How we can do this? When you start to read how you are going to do this, you will realize that the best way to do an image, an image of a scenario like a cat or a dog, is to create a deep neural network. And this is not easy. This is something that you need to spend a lot of time because at the end of the day, in order to basically identify a chihuahua like this, this is what we see. This is what the human see in a photo for us is very easy. But for a computer, uh, this, this small set of pixels is an array of numbers. And we need to figure out a way to pick up this amazing set of numbers that we have here and start to apply these layers that we have in deep learning to, I don't know, uh, identify the borders. Once we have identified the borders, try to get a couple of uh, most important features like the nose and the eyes, and then at the end, create some kind of routine algorithm that is going to help us to identify the uh, Chihuahua. But it's tricky because, and this is a very old joke, we are going to find that just trying to see the difference in the machine learning world between muffins and Chihuahua is not easy at all. And this is the moment that you need to basically start to learn a lot of maths. You go back to everything that you learn in your high school or in the university around mathematica, and it's it's become it, it's, it's a real challenge. So the main idea for today is. This is machine learning. This is what you are going to have, and this is what you are going to do. But I'm not going to do anything today. We are not going to go deep in the math. We are going to do just code. And this is the idea of machine learning.net. Machine learning.net is one of the flavors that we have in .NET. In .NET, we can create an application, desktop application. And now we can also create machine learning applications. And the idea is that, hey, let's use it to build our own stuff. It's not some, it's not a new framework from Microsoft. It's been released uh, two years ago. Internally, Microsoft used machine learning in the usage in products like PowerPoint, Excel, in example in Excel, every time that you select an array, you select a table of data and you go insert suggested charts. There is a model in the back which is going to analyze the amount of data, the data types and the relations in the type, and it's going to suggest that this should be going to be good for a bar chart or a pie chart or a scatter chart. So they are using this. But for us, it's a developer, it's a package, it's available in GitHub. We can see two main repos, one with this full source code, 
another with a, a lot of samples and it's growing a lot. It has new features all the time. We are right now, I think we are at the version 1.5.2 or something. And it's very, very cool. And as I said, there are two main repositories. One with the source code of machine learning.net and another with samples. And this is a very important one. There are a lot of samples. There are 30 plus samples here where we can see how to use machine learning to do sentiment analysis or recommendations or customer segmentation or email classification, the one that I just showed with the cat. So they come a lot and it's a great place to start because as a developer, we can go there, we can check these, these repositories and start to play around to understand what we can do. So before going to see the first sample, let's 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 take a look at how is the ABC of machine learning work. It's very simple if you are a developer, you're going to realize that it's basically what we are doing, but with different terminology and we with, with data models instead of numbers and functions. So first of all, we need to work with our data. So we pick up our data and there are a couple of ways to train this model in machine learning. One is we take with labeled data, another is with unlabeled data. I am going to focus on one right now for the labeled data, but basically we pick up a set of data and we define, hey, this is the data that we have. This is the feature the data, and this is the label. That we have. This is what we are going to, in example, present. Once we, have, once we have all of our data, we basically train them. By training the model, we pick up, we select an algorithm. This is the fun part, trying to figure out the best algorithm to work and train the model, and how we are going to tweak and the parameters to train this model. And at the end, we have a model, and we need to evaluate this model. What we do here is basically when we start with data, we split this data 80, 20, or 70, 30, and we use 80% to train the model and 20% to validate the model. Remember that at the end, the model is kind of a black box that we are going to have an in and an out. So we use this 20% of data that we have at the beginning to validate if the model that we created is really doing. And then we use the model as I said, it's a black box, it's a function. We have an input and we have an output, and we can start to use it. In the .NET world, we can pick up a model, we can create a web application with the model, we can embed this model to be used in the Windows application, in mobile application. There are several ways that we can do this. And in the full machine learning.net, we have set several samples of how we can even do pipelines with CI, CD in order to do this. Before I am a very technical person, so I am going to go directly to, to code. But before there, let's pick up a very simple, this is kind of the hello world of machine learning to see what we can do. So we have sentiment analysis here. Uh, we are going to analyze comments. This is going, this is extracted for a public data set from Wikipedia. The Wikipedia pick up a lot of comments and a lot of annotations that they have in their articles, and they tag this if the, the, these comments are toxic or not. So we are going to pick up one of these uh, data sets. There are publics, there are big, there are 40,000 rows in these data sets. And we are going to analyze how we are going to do this. They have a lot of features, a lot of columns, but for us, the important is the comment one, the text comment, and also the true false, the sentiment, which is basically if it's a toxic comment. Or not. So this is going to be the features, this is going to be the columns, this is going to be the comments. And we are going to, the output that we are expecting to predict is going to be the label of the toxic environment. And with this, this is one of the scenarios that is supported, which is basically, this is true. So this is a toxic or not toxic scenario. Machine learning can do a lot of other stuff. We can do classification like this one, we can do predictions, we can do clusterings, we can do plenty of other things. Right now, for this one, let's go for toxic or not toxic. So let's figure out in each one of the steps how we are going to do this. So we start with the data, as I said, we have labels and features, that's amazing. So the first thing that we are going to do here is we need to transform this data. Everything that we are doing machine number is based on numbers, it's based on a lot of algorithm. So we are going to pick up the text, the column for the comments, and we are going to apply a text featureizer to convert this column into numbers. This you, we, are, we are never going to see the numbers, we are never going to see the array of numbers, but we need to transform this. Once we have these transforms, once we have these 
after all these efforts, we are going to create an estimator. We are going to apply. A, we are going to apply one algorithm. We are going to train and have this model to be able to use this. So it's very simple. Uh, once we have this model, we are going to have a function. It's going to say, "Hey, this is a comment. It's working or not? It's fine. Let me do this." So we have the function, and we are going to have a new comment, and we are going to be able to estimate if the comment is toxic or not. And by the way. Usually here it's not a binary true or false. So what we are going to have is a value between zero and one. And if it's close to zero, it's not going to be uh, toxic. If it's, it is close to one, it's going to be toxic. So it's, it's up to us to, to decide as a developer. For example, if we have a new comment, we analyze the comment, and we have a value of 0 0.79, that there is a high probability that this is a toxic comment. So as I said, no more slides. Let's go and do this way. So here I have Visual Studio. Let me open this one moment here. Explorer, there it is. I need to put this in the screen. And what we have here is what I have here is a simple console application. This is not Nothing fancy. I am using I am going to use C sharp. And uh, this is a .NET 5 console application without anything anything inside. I don't have any dependencies installed, any package. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start a new get package to do machine learning. So I'm going to go to new get package console. I'm going to load up and I'm going to filter by Microsoft.ml. This is the main namespace for the package. As you can see here, there are plenty of Microsoft.NET, the Microsoft the ML.NET packages. The, the core one is the Microsoft.ML, but we have one specific to do CPU mesh applications. Then we have the fast tree, a couple of related to algorithms, one for image. For us, it's going to be the, the .ML. And the latest version that we have is 1.5.2. I'm going to do this with 1.5.0 because there was a, a slight change in the in the in the syntaxes between the in the last two versions, so I, I don't want to to miss the, the demo. But I'm going to install the package, and that's 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 what I need to do here. I have the package installed. That's my project. One, two, three. There it is. I have it here. So what I said is I am going to to put my code here in order to analyze this. So let's have this the. Let's add the toxic elements in the toxic here, machine learning, dot net. I have here my oh that's here, I'm sorry. Sentiment analysis. I have here my a couple of files here in order to, to analyze the sentiments. I have this 70 megabytes file with 40,000 uh, rows. Uh, the, the comments, so I will add it here into my project. List. I have both here. If I open this, it's going to take some time. So, then this a small one, and we are going to see what file we have here. So, we have a couple of files. First row, it's just columns. This is a tab separated uh, value file. So, we have label, revision, comment, year, login, namespace, sample suite. Here, label zero. Revision, I can have a revision, I have the comments, and I have a label one, and it's all already targeted, it's all available on Wikipedia. And the important thing here is that I am going to load this in order to see how we are going to work. So there are a couple of ways that we can do this. For us here, I am going to do, I am going to use a couple of classes class here, and I am going to Define a couple of fields in these classes. So I'm going to define. I'm going to define a, a class to load the data and a class to do the prediction. So important here is that when I'm loading the data, I am going to use just two fields here: one for the label, another for the class. And I'm going to say I'm going to define here that hey, when you load the data for the file, uh, the label is going to be the zero index column, and the text is going to be the the number two. And I can rename this whatever I want. Here, the name of the second value, the second comment, the second column is comments. This text is good. And the same with the with the output. I can define the name that I want here. 
which is going to be the predicted label, and I'm going to do my prediction. So here are my two, my two lines, my two classes to, to do the prediction. So my next step will be, let's run the data. Let's, let's start to create and load the data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the context. Everything that we are doing in machine learning.net is under a context. So we need to define a context, which is basically giving, going to give us the chance, going to give us the, the tools to create the, my light is worked off. I need to move myself a little until the lights get back. Uh, so I have my context and my next step will be, uh, okay, remember the ABC, load data, uh, create a model and then use the model. So let's load the data. How do I do this? I can load the model in my context. I will say, okay, load the data from this file, we have the file. I'm going to define a stack here, like an example, classic feeder or the common separator that I have. I can do a number of actions and operations here to load the information. It's very, very easy, very simple to do. And then I will split my data. Remember that I told you that at the beginning that we are going to have train data and test data. So I'm going to split my data 80, 20 here to have my two data sets. So I mean that for this. I have already, I, I have my data. So next step, let's do a comparison. Remember that I have one of the fields here, which is, which is a text column, which is going to be the text, uh, the text column, but I need to featureize this column. I need to create a new one, basically because it's a texting column, we need to have numbers here. So I want to featureize these columns and create a new one called features with this. And then I'm going to try here. I'm going to train a This is kind of important. To use one of the models that I have, one of the training that I have here to do a binary classification because this is one of the scenarios. I have here plenty of other scenarios. I can do anomaly detection. I can do clustering. I can do uh, forecasting. I can do multi-class classification. And in each one of these type of specific machine learning scenarios, I have different binaries. And so I have the SDCA. The, I, have, I have the average perception, I have the LBFG, I have a few folders, a type of algorithm that I can use to train the model. Very important, I share here that I am loading here my data from a text file, but I can load data from a SQL Server database of any enumerable interface. So if I have data, in, I don't know, in Cosmos DB, I can load this data, work it with Entity Framework, and then pass it here to load. So we can use everything that we know in the net to work with the data. I forget to mention this. So going back here, I have my model, I have my training, I have the my training using the label and the feature values. So what I need to do, basically I need to train. How do I train my model? A very interesting line, which basically says, Pipeline point of fit of the training data, and I will have here my training model. That's basically it. What I can do here, I can enable the model. And in order to do this, I will use the, the, the best data that I have, and I will say, let's pick up the training model that we have at the beginning and do some predictions. And this is going to give me a set of metrics to basically give me a sense of what, how I can use this, if the model is good or not. So let's go at the end, and what I can do here is, I can do a prediction in order to see, hey, this is working, this is working good, this is working bad, let's see what we can. So I will create a prediction design from the trained model, which is going to be like this, and then I can, I can create a couple of functions here, let me go here, to show the predictions. Let's run this and let's see how it works. So I have here, I'm going to do a prediction with this value, this value, this value. I think I, I think I didn't forget anything. So let's see. If so let's start step by step doing the DABC here. So create the context. Let's do the back here. Load the data. Perfect. I forget to copy these two. I need to copy the file to the output. There it is. Go back again. 
So I will load the data, I will split the data. Right now it's, I'm just defining a step, it's not really doing anything, and it's going to do all of the steps when I am going to train. So here I'm going to train the model, this is going to spend a couple of seconds, this is not a very big file. I have also a decent machine, but it's going to spend a couple of seconds training the model. This is a 17 megabyte, so it's basically load the model, split the model, load the, column, the, the, the columns, analyzing, converting columns, and generating models. I don't have a trained model. Uh, Bruno, this is the model. Yes. We can, we can hear you well. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's, oh, okay. it's better now? Yeah, yeah, it's okay now. Thanks. Sorry. So once I have my model trained and I do my prediction, what I going to do is I'm going to evaluate the model and I'm going to find some metrics. And the metrics here are going to give me a set of values depending on each one of the each one of the algorithm that I use here. And for us here, the one which is important is, let me start zooming and go back to metrics, is the accuracy in example. And this is my training model. The accuracy is kind of a good one. I have here 0 0.94, which is 94%. Which is basically said that using my original set of data and then my test data, this model gives me a, a very good values. Every everything that I am testing here, ninety four percent are good. This is kind of very good for a model. And then I can start to use the model. As I, as I said, I uh, recreate the design and I am going to start to do prediction. How do I do this? I create a new issue with the text that I am testing here. I love this model. I use the, the, the prediction, I have a set of value here, which is going to say toxic or not toxic. And depending on this, I am going to show some colors here in the console application. So I'll go back, going back for the console application. This is what we have, a good text. I love this movie. This is a good, good, good comment. This is a toxic comment. This movie is a stupid. The same with the vacuum the, that we have here. So, 20 lines, we define this, and the idea is that if we want to use this, we created an analyze, we can use this to, I don't know, to, to moderate comments in a forum, to moderate tweets, or something like this. But the idea is that if you want to use this, if you want to do this, we are not going to, we are not going to, to train the model every time, to do the predictions. What we have here is once we train the model and we evaluate the model, we can save the model. We can go here and save the model, and then we can load the model anytime that we want. And this is a very simple scenario. This is one that we only require 50 lines to train a machine learning model. It's also very detailed, and we can do plenty of other things. So, in example, uh, if we want to do anomaly detection, uh, anomaly detection is, let me pick up here. So, If I pick up here a, this set, I can pick up here an Excel file. This is my Excel file. Let me here. Here, and this file has basically two columns of month and sales per month. Here, and I go back here and I insert a recommended chart using Excel. I can go back here. I can pick up, take a look at this chart. And if you ask me what is wrong here, where is some kind of anomalies, I will quickly say, you know what? I think this one and maybe this one are not following the pattern here that we have. So this is something which is kind of wrong. We need to figure out how we can fix this. And we can do that. We can also analyze this using machine learning.net. So what I have here is an example. Let me set up this as a startup project. It's so another example that is going to do the same process. We are going to load the data from this CSV file. We are going to create an estimator. In this kind, is this one is going to be spike detector. We are going to detect the spikes here, and then changing the values here, changing the confidence and the values to basically do some predictions similar to what we did right now. And if you run this model, we are going to see that. Analyze. Sorry to yes. interrupt. We have like uh, three minutes left. All right. So we see here that it detects a couple of it a couple of points here, which are the ones 
that if this is anomalies, if you look back here and take a look, yes, 426, 580, and 687. And basically, these points here that we have, which are the anomalies. All of these examples are available here in the machine learning repository, and you can do a lot of stuff here in order to see how you can, how you want to do sentiment analysis, a multi class classification, or recommendation. And just to, to finish this, the tricky point here is okay, how do you do this? How do you, how do you choose the right algorithm? How do you do the choose the right pattern and the right parameter. So this is, there is a tool here which is called AutoML and it's part of machine learning and it's basically helping us to do this. If I have a problem like I want to do estimations for uh, for taxi or for Uber passenger, how much is going to cost a trip from A to B? I will probably have all of these features like distant trip and per type type of algorithm and parameters. So I need to pick up, okay, I'm going to train my model with these features, this algorithm, and with this criteria, train the model, have 30% of accuracy, it's very good. Let's do something else. Train with these other features, take up 50 here. So I start to play around, and I spend a lot of time training different models until I have the best one. HTML is basically here to solve this. I will do these ABCs, I will train this model, I will basically say I have this data, I want to do this, and now to a as it's part of machine learning.net, is going to train different models and it's going to give us the best one. And it's also going to give us a couple of information about the best model around, hey, this is the fields that we use in this model that we train, and the most important in model A are distance and time of the day. And in model B, an example trip time is very important. So it's up to us as a developer. How we're going to use this. And this is part of the stuff that we have here. So at the end of the day, and I know I'm closing, we created this model. I am going to close this fast. I created a model to do image recognition to detect the cat. All of the links are available here. I suggest you to go back to oops, I'm sorry, to go to dot, dot, .net slash ml and I start to look around of the machine learning. Uh, scenarios that they are here because you have a lot of documentation. This is top of core. You can use this on a Mac or on Windows or Linux. It's very stable. It's very powerful, and we have a lot of stuff. So I think we are already on time here. Sorry about the the, the, the hurry up at the at the end. Um, any question? Anything else? You can find me on Twitter in at Bruno or in my blog. I will be happy to share some to share some. To answer some questions, and hey, I'm happy to also spend some time from Canada with you. It's an amazing event that you're organizing. Well, thank you very much, Bruno. Great presentation. Thank you. So we have uh, one question from the audience. Uh, as a software engineer student, what would be my first step to join the AI field? I will strongly suggest as a student to take a look at the samples that are available in the machine learning.net because you are going to, looking at the sample for me is a great way to, to, to learn. So you start to see how you are going to do a movie prediction or a credit card fraud detection. It's a great way to understand the technology and real problems that you have. So you can match your student uh, knowledge with the business knowledge. Great, thank you. If anyone has uh, more questions, please write them in the chat. I would like to remind you that uh, all the session recordings will be available after the event and also the session materials, the slide decks. Uh, so you should expect them in your emails next week, I guess. Any more questions? All right, I think that's it. Well, Bruno, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the session. Thanks for setting up this. All the best for you. I know that you are having a very busy day. So good luck with all of the rest of the sessions. Thank you. So the next session is at 12.